Hey what's up everyone, in this video I am going to talk about almost everything that there is to learn about CSS animations. CSS animations are used to animate an element's transition from one CSS configuration to another CSS configuration and they are typically made of two parts. The first part is a style which describes the animation and the second part is a set of keyframes in which we can define the start, the end and possibly any intermediate states of the animation of the element. There are several advantages of using CSS animation instead of custom animations which are created using JavaScript code. The first one is ease of use. CSS animations are very easy to use because all we need to do is to define the animation properties and their values inside the styles and then attach those styles with the elements. When it comes to JavaScript code, then we need to either use a custom library or we need to write our own handwritten code. The second one is the CSS animations are highly optimized because the browser is implementing the animations and they are using a pretty efficient and optimized rendering engine to animate the elements and to implement the CSS animations. When we are using either our own JavaScript code or maybe some library which is available out there, it may not be that efficient and optimized for performance when we will compare it to the browser itself because browser has obviously more control of the content which is being rendered inside its viewport or view area. The third one is again that because the animations are handled by the browser, the browser can take measures to be more performance efficient. Like for example, if an animation is being played in any tab which is not visible, then the browser can simply not play the animation depending on the situation that the tab is not currently being viewed by the user. And there can be other such situations when the animation may not need to be played. And then eventually the browser can save many CPU cycles which can then be used for other operations. There are several different CSS animation properties which can be used to define an element's animation. The duration property sets the length of the time the animation will take to complete one cycle. Its value can be in seconds or milliseconds. The timing function specifies how the animation should progress through each cycle. There are many different supported values of the timing function such as ease, linear, ease in, ease out, etc. All of these timing function values eventually use a specific set of parameters of a cubic bezier and I will show you later how that is going to work. The delay defines when the animation will start and it is actually the delay in starting the animation so the animation will not play until that length of time has been passed which we have specified in the delay property. Iteration count defines the number of times an animation should play before stopping. If the iteration count has been set as infinite then animation will play indefinitely. The direction specifies the direction of the animation. It can either be forward, backward or it can be alternating. There is another value which is alternate reverse in which the direction reverses itself after each animation cycle. The fill mode is kind of complicated and I will show you later how it actually works. The fill mode specifies how the styles will apply to the element before and after the animation is played. And then there is the play state which simply specifies if the animation is playing or it is stopped. The animation name property is an important one and we create a add keyframes rule and then we specify it with a name and that name can be used for the animation name property. The add keyframes rule defines the animations which can be applied to an element. We can specify the start of an animation which is denoted by 0% and we can specify the end of the animation which is denoted by 100% and then there can be intermediate states as well. So some of the older browsers as late as year 2017 still need to have the webkit prefix for the animation properties. For this video I will only be using the standard animation property names. Alright so now let's get started with the code example and I will show you how the different CSS properties can be used along with their different values. Before we do that I would like to thank all of you for taking your time and watching this video. I hope that you will find this video interesting and useful and if you do please don't forget to place a like on it and also subscribe to this channel to be always the first one to know about the latest video updates. So in this index.html file we have a div and I'm going to apply styles on this div and then later we will apply different kinds of animation properties and their values to animate this div. So first let's just add a style element in the head of this web page and then we need to create a style for this div and for that I'm going to use its ID which is content and 
inside this content first let's just provide a basic style for this element so the first thing that i will do is to format it and then we can apply different styles so the first style that i'm going to apply is display block next we can provide width and height for this element and then let's provide a margin so that it will be centered now let's just provide a border for this div and now it's time for a little bit decoration so for that i'm going to use a border top with the color red let's also set the border radius to make it a circle all right so we have our div and now it's time to apply the animations the first property that i'm going to talk about is the animation name and for that first we have to define a keyframes element so let's just do that i'm just going to provide the name as my animation although you need to name this keyframes depending on the type of keyframes which are contained inside this block so if you are rotating it then you can probably call it as rotate if you are sliding it then you can call it slide and so on so first we need to specify the keyframe for the initial state or for the zero percent state and for that i'm going to use a transform and inside transform we need to provide the transform value so i'm just going to rotate it by zero degree so the initial state is going to be at zero degree and then we can specify the 100 percent too and for 100 percent let's just rotate it all the way to 360 degree so we have the keyframes so instead of zero percent and 100 percent we can also use from and to because they are so common so that is why from and to are also identified by css and now it's time to use this keyframe inside the content style and that can be done by providing an animation name property so animation name is going to be my animation so you can see still the animation is not playing and that is because even though we have provided the keyframes we are not setting the duration of the animation so the default one is going to be set as zero seconds so let's just set the duration so this can be done by setting the property animation duration and i'm just going to set the duration as one second let's see what happens now so now this animation is playing and it is rotating for the duration of one second it simply means that the one cycle of the animation is being played for one second if i will change it to let's say two seconds the duration is now two seconds and you can see that the animation is now slower we can also provide the duration in milliseconds so i can provide the duration as 500 millisecond so this is how we can use the animation name and animation duration properties next i'm going to talk about the animation iteration because by that you will see how the animation can be played a number of different times so to set the iteration count we need to use the property animation iteration count and then we can provide the count over here so if i will set the count as five then this animation is going to be played five times or it will run for five cycles and if i will set it for infinite then it will play indefinitely so you can see that the animation is being played indefinitely because i have provided the value infinite this is important in controlling the number of iterations of our animations for example if we are using a css spinner then we want it to be played infinitely let's also make it a little bit slower so that we can see how this animation is being is starting and is stopping so right now you can see that the start and stop is abrupt and we can actually control the entire progression of the animation through each cycle by using the timing function animation property so for that we need to add a new property which is called as animation timing function so we can provide any of the available timing function value for example if i will provide the value of ease then you can see the noticeable difference that the animation is easing when it is being stopped if i will set another property like i can set it as linear then you can see immediately the animation is linear it is not stopping it is just playing continuously so linear timing function can be useful when we want to show the progress of any operation there are other values like ease out so ease out is going to be different ease out is going to ease out when the animation is being stopped so all of these available timing function values are actually the cubic bezier function values so you must be thinking what a cubic bezier is so a cubic bezier is denoted by four points and it defines how the animation is going to play out if it is linear then it will be 
in the form of a straight line if it is not linear if it is kind of a curved line then the animation will follow that curve and you can experiment on these different kinds of values if you have free time and you can use this website too this cubicbzl.com to you know change the values for different points and then you will see how the animation can be played by setting all of these different values the next property that i'm going to show you guys is animation direction so animation direction is also a pretty useful one because we can define the direction of the animation if i will set the direction as reverse then you will see that the element will start to rotate in the reverse direction if i will set the value as let's say alternate then let's see what happens when we will set the alternate value then first it will animate in the forward direction then it will animate in the reverse direction there is another value which is alternate reverse so alternate reverse simply tells us that the animation is going to change its direction after each cycle and you can play out with these values to actually understand and get a grasp on how all of these values work differently the next property that i'm going to talk about is animation fill mode now animation fill mode is kind of complicated to understand in the beginning but once you get the grasp of it then you will see how useful it is to implement in different scenarios so what does animation fill mode say let's just first set the value as none now before i can show you how the fill mode can be used first i will have to set the iteration count as one and i will also have to add a new property to the from and to transitions so let's just add a background color because it is the easier to identify so i'm just going to set the background color for the from as blue and then for the two as green the animation fill mode currently is none which simply means that none of the fill mode is being applied if i will set the fill mode as forwards then what will happen is the element will retain the same properties or the same animation properties of the last keyframe when the animation completes so when we have set the fill mode as forward then the element is going to retain the background color as a green css property so let's just refresh this page again you can see that initially it was blue and now the animation has ended and after this the background color is now permanently green because we have set the fill mode as forwards there is another fill mode value which is backwards now backwards property value is used to set the element to the first keyframe css style before the animation even started to play so over here when the css animation is not being played then the background color is going to be white notice over here the blue color is at zero percent but before zero percent there was no blue color there was only white color so if i will set the fill mode to backwards then when the animation will finish then the background color is again going to be reset to the one which was before the animation even started to play to demonstrate it better i am just going to add a background color over here too so let's just set the background color as a yellow so before the animation started the background color was yellow so when we will use the fill mode backwards then the style will revert back to the one which was before the animation started to play and again let's just set it to forward for comparison now when i will set it to forwards then the background color will be set to the one which was at the end of the keyframe or when the animation stopped playing which was the green color there is another value which is both so both will retain both of the property values the final property that i'm going to talk about is the play state so animation play state determines if the animation is playing or not so when the play state is running then the animation is playing when it is paused then the animation is paused for example we can pause the animation whenever we will hover our mouse on it and we can again start to play it when the mouse is not hovering over the element so let's just have a hover style for this content and what i can do is inside the hover i can set the animation play state as paused and inside the main style i can set it as running and also let's set the iteration count as infinite so that we can play and pause it okay so right now it's playing and then let's hover our mouse on it and now it's paused let's move the mouse out of the element and it has started to play again and this is how animation play state works 
and this is almost there is to understand and learn about css animation there is another property which can be used and this property is actually a shorthand because right now we are using all of the animation properties individually but if we don't want to do that if we just want to provide a simple enough animation then what we can do is we can use a single animation property and then we can provide space separated values so for example we can provide the um, you know the backwards value or we can provide the um, you know the linear for the um, for the timing function etc so that is pretty much it for this video if you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area and i will try to respond to your questions as soon as possible again if you like the video then please place a like on it and also subscribe to the channel code first if you want to be the first to know about the latest video updates and i will see you in the next video till then have a great time